Hey guys, I'm Kaylin. Welcome back to Fable Hill Farm. This is going to be a double goat birth vlog. However, one already happened before I was ever in the picture and I came out to surprise kids yesterday morning and the next one is ongoing. So ID, my black and white Nigerian dwarf doe is in labor right now. She is a first timer. She has never had kids before. In the goat world, that's what we would call a first freshener. Each kidding or each birth is referred to as a freshening. And then Sunny, who is in the kidding stall next to her, kitted out a surprise twin doe kids yesterday morning. And I will show you guys some of that footage uh, right now. Sunny had two little kids snuggled up and next to her in the barn. Now, Sunny is not due until January 25th. Nigerian dwarf goats have a gestational range of 145 days being optimal. That's their due date, but they can go five days in either direction, which is very common. She would not have reached that five days early point until next week, Thursday. So these kids are about five days early. So they're about 10 days early. They are fully formed, they fully have hair, they have teeth. So I talked to my mentor, she said, maybe, and I'll have to look into this. I'm just speaking off the cuff here. Um, I don't know the science behind it. She said, maybe that if she had already like released the egg and was like actively ovulating right when she was bred, that she could have just had the kids develop a little faster instead of the sperm floating around and waiting for the eggs to release or something. So it's pretty cold here. Um, I was, I think it was like eight degrees this morning, seven degrees this morning. I was not prepared to have kids on the ground this early. And I can tell you this will be the first and the last time that I'm ever this unprepared, this close to kidding dates. Um, you know, I had the kidding pens set up. I showed that in my last video, but I didn't have like all my extension cords. I didn't have my kennel heating pad out here, whelping pad which helps them to keep warm. Um, I just was not prepared for this. So it was quite a shock and set me into quite a, quite a panic. Um, I immediately brought the kids. I put them in a tote and brought them into here. I got the heat lamp on and I brought Sunny in here. I brought Sai, her doling just as company to help her to not be overly stressed being by herself. Now she was laying next to the kids. She was keeping them warm. They were pretty much dried off at that point. Um, I did go ahead and give her about nine cc's of calcium gluconate to help her to pass anything if there's anything left. I gave her some warm molasses water. She's got some hay, she's eating, um, she's on her feet, but you know, she's definitely, stressed um the kids are cold definitely very cold this is sigh here the kids are right now i have them in a heating pad on top of a whelping pad wrapped in a towel under a heat lamp just to help to bring their body temperature up <laughs> I checked them for a suck reflex. They both had a suck reflex, but their mouths were very cold. So my mentor, Stacy, said, don't, you know, worry about them nursing or anything until they get warmed up. They need to get warm first. Goats cannot um, safely and properly digest milk if they're cold. So that's where I'm at right now is just getting them warmed up. And they both were on their feet, but they seem a little wobbly. I'm probably going to give them some selenium, some oral selenium gel. Um just because they seemed a little weak on their legs, which is odd. I did supplement her with a little bit of selenium, um, a couple doses towards the end of her pregnancy, but I do think they seem, and maybe when they're, you know, more up on their feet and warm, they won't seem so wobbly. So I'm just gonna wait and see. But I did, I did glove and lube and go in and just kind of feel around right there in that, um, you know, vaginal cavity to see if I could feel anything. I've never, done that before so i don't really know what i'm feeling for but i was worried she might have a retained kid so i was shocked she would only have twins for how big she was um 
but <laughs> Stacy told me not to worry about it. And you know, she is up, she's eating. Um, she's got some like bloody mucusy discharge coming out, which, you know, can be totally normal after birth. You know, a lot of stuff comes out after birth. So that's where we're at. My husband went out and finished up the chores for me real quick, just so that the animals have food and water. I let Finkel's weather on her so that he could relieve her a little bit. She needs to be milked, but I'm not gonna worry about that right this second until I know kind of where these kids are at. So I will check back in with you. Well, it's about an hour and a half later. Both the kids are finally warm enough. I got them both to nurse. Sunny is licking them, showing a little interest in them. They're moving around. They are both does. They are both doe kids. So I am super happy. I'm glad to see them up and nursing. And I'm just going to be, you know, keeping an eye on them today, making sure they stay warm, that they're eating, and that she is taking care of them and showing interest in them. But she's, she was a really good mom her first go around last year. And I think she just was a little shocked and confused and you know moving her in this pen and everything it's a little stressful so but they're making noise now screaming baby goats makes me happy it means they're alive and you know um looking for milk looking for trouble doing goat stuff so he's the first kid that ate these goats were not oh she slipped kid number one no. Oh, good mama, Sunny. Good girl. They put Sai in here. That way she could still be with her mom, but Sunny would, you know, be more focused on her new kids. And here's kid number two. Oh. <laughs> I just wanted you to make your mom feel safe. You're doing a good job, honey. Sunny is bonding with her kids. Got their coats fixed, cut leg holes in them. I was a little bit concerned about this kid. She just seems a little weaker. She did seem like she got cold again after she nursed. Just seemed a little bit less sturdy. Uh, so I went ahead and gave her a little selenium and vitamin E gel. Leg seemed a little weak. And then I also gave her a little bit of power punch to help to just give her a nutrient boost. And she did nurse again, just for a second. And then she acted like she was disinterested. Um, you know, she's alert, she's walking around. So I'm just gonna keep a good eye on her and uh, see how she's doing. Sunny's doing good. You can see kiddos trying to keep warm. They've got the heating pad for now, and I've got the heating mat, the whelping pad, and then the heat lamp. So it's uh, it's pretty cold, but they just need a couple of days to start regulating their own body temperature, and then they should be, you know, fine and start adjusting to the cold. So kids are nursing. Ellie's out here visiting the babies. Say hi, Ellie. Say hi, everybody. This is for mommy's YouTube channel for my videos. Don't put stuff into that lamp, honey. It's very hot. Don't do that. Love seeing this. Kids looking for the tea and nursing on their own. Means they're getting stronger. So I'm back out here. It's about 3.30 in the afternoon. I wound up taking Sai out because she seemed really stressed being away from the herd and Sunny, you know, needs to bond with these kids anyways. So, uh, yeah, she's doing good. She hasn't been screaming. I mean, Sunny's a loud goat and apparently a super fat one that she could be this fat and only have, you know, two kids in her, but I'm just grateful to have healthy kids and a healthy mom. I just gave her some crushed baby aspirin. I don't keep Banamine on hand. And uh, just with how like swollen and everything she is, I just wanted to give her some relief. And you can look up the dosage, do your own research, consult a veterinarian, of course. I am not a vet. I'm not giving any veterinary advice. I am just telling you what I'm doing. I researched the dose 
for aspirin, not baby aspirin, but full size aspirin is 325 milligrams per 10 pounds for a goat. And so I didn't have regular aspirin, I had baby aspirin and uh, I dosed according to that. So she is doing good. She, you know, again, she's eating. I gave her some grain this morning and then I gave her a little alfalfa pellets this afternoon. She's had the power punch. I did give her, as I mentioned, the calcium um, when I first discovered her in these surprise kids. And then um, I came back out a while ago, gave her some more warm water with a little bit of blue light in it, which is a, an electrolyte for goats. And then I also gave her some oregano oil in there. Oregano is a warming oil. It is good when you look at like um, parasite prevention and, and certain things. So again, do your own research there. I've talked about stuff in other videos. I won't get into that now, but um, I also went, of course, and put a second heat lamp in here. I just really wanted to know these kids were getting warm and the first, you know, couple days, especially the first like 12 to 24 hours is so critical for these kids. And I figured if I don't need them right this very second, if I don't need that other one, cause ID's not, you know, kidding yet, obviously, then I was just gonna use it and make sure that these babies had double the heat source. Now I have unplugged this um, heating pad here. So I do want to take that out. That's what I used initially that I feel like made such a difference to um, getting those kids back up to an appropriate temperature, a body temperature. So wrapping them in that, I think really, really helped with the towel over them. And then of course the um, kennel, the whelping pad that's there, I will certainly invest in more of them. They make a huge difference. And when ID comes in here, I'm going to like slide half of that underneath it and have it in this stall just so that way I do have that but um yeah I need to get another one they're not <laughs> they're not cheap and there's also like farrowing pads they make for pigs and stuff but this one works really well for these baby goats so I, I definitely want to invest in more in the future and uh, I, I will do that but the kids are warm I've seen them up on their own and eating and you know Birth is tiring, Get both giving birth and being born is an exhausting experience. So, right here, you can see she's looking to nurse again. And this other one that I was more concerned about here initially, uh, she's doing much better after the selenium and power punch and, you know, nursing again. So I'm not concerned about her anymore. She seems on par with her litter mate as far as uh, energy and stuff. And they're both definitely nursing and Sunny is being attentive to them. So I'm no longer worried that she might reject the kids. Just initially, she wasn't showing a lot of interest in them. But of course, um, she dried them off and kept them warm, you know, without me being there. So obviously she was taking care of them. It's been a hard day on your son. You're a good girl though. You are. She is a talkative doe, that's for sure. She was like knocking them out of the way and trying to get under the heat and kind of stealing it. She was cuddling with them and keeping them warm through that, but she was like stealing the heat. So I knew she just needed a little extra too, which is why I gave her those alfalfa pellets a while ago. And I'm gonna give her some more hay and you know, gave her the aspirin. I think she's just, you know, hurting and exhausted and stressed. So, you know, we'll get her feeling good. I am going to um, give her some probiotics because that's really good for them, you know, under stress. I'll give her some more power punch here tonight. Again, that's like a nutrient boost. Just helps with um, stress and helps them to have energy and, you know, not like shut down rumens or stop eating or anything like that. So. so as you can see, yesterday was quite an eventful day. When we look at uh, the really cold temperatures we've had here in Michigan and then coming out to the barn, not expecting kids to be on the ground for another 10 days. Whoops. And uh, there they were. So 
Yesterday, I was keeping a close eye on ID, realizing that Sir Dabby came to visit, little Dabby Bobby. Uh, yesterday, I really, you know, kept an eye on ID, expecting her to potentially go into labor at any time. She was bred the day before Sunny, but, you know, again, they can go five days in either direction. And so today is the 16th of January and it's just shy of midnight, so almost the 17th of January. And ID was due on the 14th of January. Her ligaments are gone. I have seen her um, contracting and she's starting to dig a little bit. Um, this cat is, I mean, I don't know if you saw my latest video, it's like, this is a crazy barn cat lady apparently. I don't know why they're so obsessed with me, but they are. They're so sweet. I just got such sweet kitties. Dabby's a lover boy, he is. So I expected her to go into labor and really been watching her. And then today I noticed her ligaments were really quite soft and squishy. And then this afternoon they did seem to disappear. And um, I've just had her in here just for safety and to keep Sunny and her kids company. These are items that should not freeze. I've got betadine for umbilical cords and I've got calcium gluconate, which I am going to go ahead and give her now. Um, nine cc's of this. I've got power punch, which is for energy. I've got lube. Hopefully I don't need that. And alcohol for sterilizing. That reminds me. I actually charged the light on my GoPro. I do need to get these scissors here. Cutting umbilical cords. Stick these here. And then I think I'll just go ahead and get out my bag of. This light is a, like a warmer for food for like parties and stuff, and it gets really hot. You couldn't like put an animal or anything under it, but I thought. That would be perfect. It's so cold out here just to keep these items here because um, I just don't want them to get overly cold. And so that way they're, um, they're there. Okay, here's my cleaning kit. So this is my bag of like um, things I would need immediately for work. And then everything else is kind of like a maybe. The towels, of course, I would need. So I'm going to take out... Dobby. Leave it to a cat. I mean, really, Dobby. Okay, I'm this under attention. Oh, here comes Jinx. I'm going to take out a couple of towels and I'm going to set them up top. I've got a blow dryer handy here if I need it. I've got my little goat, baby goat coats. And I went ahead and made these. I cannot sew. These are heck job. Um, these are made from like sweatpants. And then I had this like Sherpa material and I just lined them and this one probably looks a little bit better because these two were my first attempts and Sunny's kids have um, some second and third attempts. I have my baby monitor over in the corner. That's the only place it works is on the floor by the cat door, metal barn, so that I can hear if my daughter wakes up. But actually my mother-in-law took her to bed and she's up there with her right now. So that's covered. My husband is sleeping because he has to get up early for work. And uh, I'm out here just holding down the fort. So I've got everything handy if I need it, fingers crossed. I don't need anything else. In the garage, I've got prepped and ready a bucket with molasses to bring her out some warm water when she's done kidding. And um, up here, yeah, I've got the blow dryer, I've got the coats. Got uh, the Premier One uh, heat lamp already plugged in. I've got a heating pad handy if I need to warm up kids. I definitely will be, um, you know, blow drying them off, I think. Well, you guys, I did not kid last night. She definitely has no ligaments. I gave her the calcium gluconate last night. Checked on her a couple of times throughout the night and then realized she didn't seem like she was progressing, so I stopped checking on her. Just listened to the baby monitor, wasn't hearing anything. Uh, it's definitely going to be today, and I got to arrange with my mother-in-law to just kind of keep an eye on Elle, either drop her off over there, have her come hang out, and uh, we'll just be 
seeing how long it takes her today. She All right, so it is almost 8 p.m. and Ivy is still in labor. She has not progressed to active labor. I talked to my goat mentor, who is also Ivy's breeder, uh, asked if it was safe to give some more calcium gluconate because it's been about 24 hours since I gave it to her initially. Um, she had me check her also, so I put a glove on and I, you know, put lube on and I just went in and checked to feel for how dilated she was. This is also new to me. I'm really not sure. Daddy, can you stop? I'm really not sure how dilated she really was. I don't have a lot of experience in, you know, doing vaginal exams on livestock and by don't have a lot of experience, I mean none, but, um, she does have more discharge now and you know she is in labor um i think a big part of it is stalling from just like stress and anxiety about her surroundings and just everything situational you know goats are prey animals so if they don't feel safe and relaxed then they're not going to want to stop and give birth discharge come in she was just pawing at the ground She's backed up more. I think it's going to be time sooner rather than later. Right, Idy girl? Idy. Brought my little birthing bucket in here. Some clean towels. All my other kidding supplies are out there if I need them. having a hard time settling down. Birth is confusing and scary. Right, Ivy girl? Come here. Confusing and scary. It's okay. She is having more discharge. I think she's going to lay down here. My GoPro is not working because the batteries are too cold. So here I am on my phone. I don't know how much footage I'll actually get. I am charging my phone right now, but it's like halfway dead. Who came out here? Because Idy was screaming bloody murder on the monitor. And she had already pushed this kid out. So I'm getting it dry and warm as quickly as possible. Another kid. Push, girl, push. Good girl, Heidi. Kid to get warm, of course. Good girl, Heidi. Good girl. Kid's already up and standing. Look at that. Literally born four or five minutes ago. Oh, Heidi, you're doing so good cleaning it off. Good job. What a beautiful kid. Oh my god. Push, girl. Push. Oh. Oh, oh baby. Oh. Come on. Oh, good job. Oh, good job. Oh, okay. Oh, welcome to the world, little thing. Welcome. Hi, nice to meet you. Oh, good job. Oh my gosh, baby. I can't believe this. Twins, good job, mama. Clean it off. Let's get this baby cleaned off, honey. Get this dump off of it. Good girl, Mama. Good job. Oh, God. We're up.
looking for the tea. Tried putting her on the tea, but right here, honey. And she gets mad. She wants to do it all by herself. Let's see if she's got a. She says I'm not like me touching her. Hey. Are you mad about the blow dryer? Let's see. Do you got a suck reflex? You act like you're looking for the tea. Let me just see. Okay, your mouth feels okay. Not too cold. Lady's being a good mom, aren't you, lady girl? You want to get them nursed or no? Chamose and Chamose with white, both does. High five, mama. Both pretty well dried off. Both got coats on. And um, now the big thing is making sure that they're nursing. I tried putting them on and they're both really adamant that they don't want my help. So I'm going to give them a few minutes to see if they can figure it out. If she can encourage them. I checked. She does have milk. Well, her udder was bagged up anyway. So looking sturdy. Twin does two sets of twin does in three days. It's pretty crazy. The doe fairy has smiled upon me. For ID some nice hot molasses water. Oh, she's getting in there. Oh, she's nursing. You found it on your own, you little diva. You didn't want me to do it, huh? You didn't want me to show you? She was 100% sure she wasn't gonna. Let me show her where the teeth was. She is Miss Independent. Oh, Ivy, you're being such a good mom too. I can't believe you gave me twin dose. You need to get back there and nurse, honey. Look at what your sister is doing. Look, the milk is that way. You need to get you nursing. One really flashy chamoise and white kid, it looks like, and one solid. I don't know if I already said that. Both girls. Oh my gosh. Look at. Oh, Heidi, you did so good. Her liquor going, huh? Oh, babies. Hmm. You're almost there. Oh, try again. Instinct is a powerful thing. And their instinct tells them to get up and look for a teat. Pretty, pretty amazing. And you turned the wrong way. They're this way. They're that way. They're okay. It's really critical that I know that they're nursing because so important for him to get colostrum in the first, you know, hour or so of life. Because that's what is going to keep them alive. Gives them all their antibodies and nutrients and energy to survive. It's cold. It's winter. We lost the nurse. Okay. Oh, you found it, little one. You found it, yay. Oh, you almost had it, it's right there. It's right there. It's right here. <laughs> yes, that's it. 
a little slow. Very she was like on it, honey. It's right here. Right here. Look, this is it. Gotcha. Kick her sister off with the board. Ding dong. She really. It's gonna look opposite direction. Solid one found the teat and got a nice long drink. The one was white. I don't think his nurse near enough, so I'm trying to encourage her to follow her sister's example and get a big long drink. Get him up and that's what we want to do here. Over there. Looking. There. There. That's what you needed, honey. More milk. That perk you up. Oh my gosh, they are so cute. You did. You did so good, Mama. You did. Drink about half of her bucket. She's like, I want to eat too. I want to also eat. There's two teats, but she's still got to pass the placenta. So I'm going to give her some calcium, which just helps to make that process a little smoother. Calcium gluconate orally. She's being a great mom, though. She's really showing interest, being attentive, cleaning them, talking to them, letting them nurse, most importantly. What are we doing, Rito? It's hard work being born, isn't it? Oh, it is hard work to be born. Sunny's trying to clean it, too. You're a good mama, Sunny. That's not your kid. Maybe he's got some grain to perk her up. And back here we have a screamer. Good work. Listen to you. You got some pipes, girl. Come on. Are you okay? You just need to get warm, huh? You tired? Hard work, littles. That good, Heidi girl. I'll pick you up, Sunny. So jealous. She's like, I love food. Where's my food? You are a loud one, huh? You are loud. For oh, your pipes. <laughs> so it's about 6 p.m. later in the day since I de-kitted and I thought I would just kind of touch on the whole experience and then give you guys a quick look at what my milking routine is looking like right now before I sign off on this video. ID's birth was pretty crazy because she was in labor, just what, what they would call pre-labor for so long, you know, having all these signs, the pawing and the stretching and the yawning and the grinding your teeth and the up and down and up and down and clearly having contractions for so long. And because of the temperature, I was just really nervous about her kidding without me there. So I wound up staying in the barn with her for hours and hours till around 1 a.m. in my sleeping bag, laying under a heat lamp with her. Well, I was laying under the heat lamp. She's fine. She has, you know, a goat coat, her hair. Um, but I was just really cold. And finally at one o'clock, I said, I have got to go inside and just get warm. I went in, I took a hot shower. And I just laid down in bed with the baby monitor, figuring, you know, she was at a place where she was laying down and just seemed fine. And now, I don't know if you're a woman and you're watching this and you've had a baby, like there are moments in the labor process where you are resting and that allows you to, you know, work up the energy reserves to be able to 
continue with the final stages of labor and that happens across species and that's normal. And so I got to a point where I felt like she was just not progressing and she needed to rest and I really needed to be warm and get a little sleep myself. So I went in, I had the baby monitor and at about 5.45 this morning, I did hear her screaming and clearly a kid was coming out. So, I, you know, I checked on her a couple of other times and I listened carefully to the monitor, but I didn't hear anything. And so I didn't think she was, you know, actually kidding. And when she screamed like that, I woke up, I knew immediately that's what was happening. Got dressed as fast as I could and just flew out the door into the barn and she had her first kid mostly out by then. It was a really easy delivery for her. I didn't have to do anything other than make sure that those kids got dry immediately because it was so cold. So I did use a blow dryer on them as you saw and I worked with ID. She was great at licking them and she's been a wonderful mom. I just worked with her to get the kids as dry and warm as possible. I employed the use of a heating pad also and towels and I just focused on getting those kids dry. I got my homemade very rough shod uh, goat coats on them and now I just wanted to say that you don't necessarily need a coat for your goat and that's usually uh, counterintuitive to what you should be doing because goats can perfectly fine survive in extremely cold, harsh climates, even though, you know, Nigerian dwarfs like I have are from Africa originally, but they do well in cold climates here. They will grow their own coat. And if you are putting a coat on an animal, you are preventing them from naturally acclimating to the climate. And that is not a good thing to do. But in a situation like this, where we're talking about brand new babies who for the first few days of life, especially are not capable of regulating their own body temperature and because of how cold it truly is with the wind chill factor I decided to put coats on these kids and I feel really comfortable that that was the right decision and currently is and when it warms up a little bit when they get you know a little bit stronger and they're able to acclimate to the temperature then I will start that process by removing their coats and you know doing some other things but right now it's so cold that they need that so I just wanted to say that because that's really important and you should be aware of those things before you make any kind of decision to use a coat on any type of livestock really you know there are factors to consider such as what i mentioned so id had a great birth uh she had two beautiful doe kids which is just such an amazing surprise and i'm so so thankful and honestly just shocked that in three days i've gotten four doe kids which is just such a blessing so happy for that i will likely allow them to grow out to eight to ten weeks and i will select three to retain and I will sell one. I do have a reservation from a woman who lives in, I believe, West Virginia, who does milk testing on a Sunny Detour doe kid. And I did let her know that there were two doe kids born, but that I wasn't making any final decisions about who I was retaining for a while. So I wanna see what Wendy kids out and I do need to get Haggis and Ely and Cy checked to see if they are bred because there will be does, you know, that I would wanna retain from those litters as well. But in order to prove out a buck, like Detour, my junior herd sire, who I'm really, really excited about, you need to retain and freshen daughters. You need to see what changes he makes to an udder. The more daughters you retain and out of the more dams that you retain them from, you are gonna get a better picture of what your buck is actually producing and what changes he is making. And if he is positively or negatively impacting your herd in the direction you would like to go. Let's milk some goats. Well, there you have it. My current milking routine, a little rough around the edges seeing as A, we're in a new space, B, I keep changing my milk room around and I will be changing it again. I'm sure, you know, just trying to figure out what works best in the new space. And I still have to bring in my cabinet from the barn. I have to get my milk machine uh, space prepped on that counter. So I just still have a lot to do and it's not gonna stay that way. It's just a work in progress. Wanted to show that to you guys. I got to bring Wendy in. She's bred and due February 14th and just uh, give her a little bit of grain and check on her 
And I thought we would say goodnight to mamas and babies before we go. <laughs> Everyone is tucked in tight. It's time to tell the goats goodnight. Here's Sunny. Her kids are now, uh, I guess, I think it's actually three days old. They were born on January 15th. She's doing really well. Great mom, second freshener. Her kids' names I've already picked out and I'll be sharing those soon. They are cuddled up and sleeping. Right, son? Yeah, it's a good girl, Sunny. And then Miss Idy here, this first timer, first freshener, being such a good mom, aren't you, Idy girl? Whoa. No, I don't want you to lick my fingers. I don't have anything for you. Nope. Idy is being a wonderful mom as well, keeping her kids warm, but she also wants to know about my GoPro. So nosy. And these two are doing so good. So sweet. Love the baby girls. Love them. They're the cutest. <laughs> There's nothing cuter than those again. Oh, basking in the sun. Need that heat right now, don't you? <laughs> Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I will see you in the next one. Don't forget, if you are not already subscribed, if you are interested in Nigerian dwarf goats and milk testing and showing and breeding competitive dairy goats or in raising goats using holistic livestock management practices. Make sure you like my video, subscribe, comment down below. Let me know who you are, what your program is like, what are you interested in hearing and learning more about. I appreciate all of you who watch my videos. I will see you in the next one. Bye. <laughs>